democracy in india is under threat india is amongst the worst autocratizers in the world freedom of press is under stress you open any news website newspaper tv channel and you have these doomsday headlines screaming back at you you close the news channels and the news websites and get back to normal life and life is as normal as it can be for the common people so who is driving this anti india narrative and what is the idea behind this narrative and what exactly is a narrative and how important it is for nation building it is said that until the lion learns to write history the hunter will keep writing the history so this to discuss this making and unmaking of narratives we have with us shri vikram sood former chief of the research and analysis wing welcome to sambhat sir thank you for having me over thank you mayank sir from munich to new york from chatham house to bbc from we them to freedom of press index and whatever we are being told that the indian democracy is under threat the indian minorities are under threat the press is under threat in whole the whole idea of india is under threat so i would like to know from you sir what is this what is driving this anti india narrative and who are the people behind it i tell you what it's not democracy that is under threat here or the freedoms i think the west feels threatened itself it feels threatened from a rising democracy from its uh, nationalism shall we say from its desire to be atmanirbhar that they feel economically threatened they have one china to deal with whom they helped along to become big and uh, uh, hoping that they would become democratic i do not know where they got that idea from mm -hmm. except that it was probably part of a narrative to sell a story why are we dealing with the autocratic china oh because we will bring them into democracy when they become rich so that was the storyline actually they all wanted to make money mm. now having made the money you find that so far indians have been you know acha acha goody goody types won't do anything the hey comes along a man who says no i'm going to do it differently that is the threat so 2014 happened they said ah this is a one one night one one day wonder it's a one day match he'll be gone the next time well, we didn't he he improved his position the next time and that became the worrying point that if it is two it could be three hmm theek hai na so now how do you pull down the world's largest democracy and make it malleable and pliable to your liking so you start a narrative and it's conservative concerted and i've heard from all sides press media politics money whatever whatever is you want to take india is india is doing a bad job so ye that has been the style bbc brings out that tawdry uh, story mm -hmm. 20 years old disregards what has been decided in the supreme court and uh, mix it into a story mm -hmm. on my board in at home upstairs i have a, a cartoon from bbc is a mother telling her daughter unless you stop lying you will become a bbc journalist <laughs> think that now i preserve that i i look at it so that you know years ago when you we were young there was only one all india radio koi khabar aati koi nahi aati that sort of thing then bbc was the go to place mm -hmm. voice of america was the go to place then everybody said okay if the bbc is published it must be right mm -hmm. now when bbc publishes i want to know what's the source mm -hmm. so it they have fallen we have risen maybe but they have fallen they have lost ground they have lost credibility which is the most important thing in a media magazine in a mm -hmm. media outfit mm -hmm. so who if if i as an individual i'm probably not the country feel threatened by these gimmicks it won't work 
Mm-hmm. The voter in B town, the voter in villages, doesn't see BBC. He mm-hmm. doesn't read the New York Times. He doesn't know what V Dam is, and he couldn't care less. Nor could I. So that was not going to make any difference. But the idea is to not let this happen. So, abhi to it will go on. It will increase. Mm. Khalistan movement at this time, mm. all sorts of money is being thrown in. You have that uh, woman asking that absurd question of Rahul Gandhi, mm. uh, Mera, some Mera. Right? All, all, you know, these. If you overdo this, if you are not smart, if you are not subtle about it, and if it sticks out. Then it hurts the doer's credibility. Mm-hmm. You know, if you have done a smart story, it it is not uh, you can't doubt it, or at the most you say, yeah, maybe an exaggeration. But here it looks as if it's it's just a put up job. So it's it's going to be like this for some time. We should really not. We should pay attention, but don't get worried. Yehoga. It's quite relentless, sir. I mean, the one day it's New York Times, some Anuradha Basin writing some article about how freedom of press is being curtailed. I'm sure yeah, yeah. it reads New York Times. That's a separate issue. But huh. but the, the audacity to keep at it regularly. I mean, there must be people who are working behind it, sir. So what is yeah. the of these foreign media organizations getting to the play? How do how do they? I mean, no, I think from their side, what do they think, sir? No, I think don't think there is a cabal that is sitting there every day deciding what is to be done. It's it's understood that uh, it is in our interest to make sure that you get a government that we desire in Delhi. You can't call it regime change like you would call it in Syria or or Iraq or Iran, because how can you have a change of regime in democracies where you have the 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 freest of elections and and the largest. Nobody can match the numbers that vote in India. So why can you? Who? How are you going to justify that you want to bring a democracy down? You want to make it appear as if it comes down on its own, under its own weight. They did it to themselves. But uh, it's it's not it's not going to work because we know that we never got any democracy bonus from anyone. It is all. Because my dictator is better than your democracy, kind of slogan. So Zia Ul Haq got what he wanted, and today in the newspaper, uh, Joe Biden is saying, "I will give some aid to Pakistan." I don't know how much, but he will. I don't know it's a few million, maybe, which uh, or a few, uh, billion. I don't know, but what actually goes? It is because I suppose because uh, reward for having supplied arms to, to Ukraine. It could be a trade-off because Pakistanis uh, love these kinds of trade-offs. And sell off something, selling off the crown jewels for whatever. Mm-hmm. So, uh, well, these what supplies they give back to Ukraine may not be crown jewels, but under that garb, they've given something surely. But so it. Ah, uh-huh, sir, please. This will continue. So uh, I'll I'll take a detour towards Mr. George Soros, who <laughs> is very angry at India and uh, particularly uh, Prime Minister Modi from uh, Davos yeah. to Munich. It's it's always he he he's very angry. Basically, he's very angry. But when I when I hmm. looked into, I mean, everybody knows it for a fact that he's been convicted of financial malpractice in France, yeah. and he's accused of yeah. sabotaging currencies and financial institutions. Now my hmm. Concern is that how a person of this sort, I would say, get platforms like Davos or Munich Security Conference around the world. He gets very good media. He gets all the platforms. He talks about people he does not like, and he does not utter a word about the Democrats in your in in uh, the in US or, or or their pals in Europe. So how does this, he get all these platforms? Well, I I suppose one reason is people may agree with him. With what he's saying, that is one aspect. The other is what I call philanthropy for profits. 
you dole out money, you get a voice. Mm -hmm. You know, you pay me hundred million dollars. Maybe I'll I'll do what you want me to do. Say what you want me to say. I'm not saying he's doing that, but there there could be a, some. What is the other tie up he could have? He is no flag waving patriot who's going to reform the world. Mm -hmm. He he fancies himself as a philanthropist who donates money to uh, think tanks to his own group. What is it called? The open, open society. Open society. open society. They talk of democracy. But, uh, you know, you you follow the money trail, you will find out what is going on. Where he where he invests in big American think tanks. I'm sure he is contributing to the World Economic Forum or the Munich Security Conference as a donor, and uh, he gets a place. You buy a fellowship in universities, don't you? China is doing that in you buy a chair, you buy a chair in a university, pay two hundred thousand dollars or whatever it is. Could be the same thing here. But what does he it mean? Contributes. The credibility of such platforms uh, when you have these people uttering anything. Basically, he's spreading anarchy. So what does this mean about the uh, Security Conference basically supporting anarchy? Well, uh, uh, ultimately, these conferences lose out their, their standing. It becomes, uh, you know, just another um, jambori. And you uh, lose out once the credibility is gone, then it is finished. You can't get it back. You can try what you can, but an institution that loses credibility, it could take a lifetime to get it back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I suppose Munich Security Conference isn't what it used to be. It's, uh, and uh, I don't know whether people are still dying to go there. There are other alternatives. The center is going to be Asia. The next center. Europe has no chance after Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And the uh, United States hasn't won a single war after 1945. Even that they won because of the Soviets. They did, they, they did the maximum to hit Hitler. More Russians died than anyone else in the world. So, uh, we'll name one war which the Americans have won, fighting a battle beyond its shores. After 1945, Korea was a stalemate. Mm. Vietnam was a loss. Afghanistan was a loss. Iraq was a loss. And I do not know I don't think Ukraine is something that can, that they can boast about. True. So uh, once you lose, you can be the mightiest power on earth. But what what good is it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What does it give me? You know, we we uh, must learn to judge our friends and enemies. Not just by what they do, but how it affects me. You know, you can fight the global war on terror, but what does it do for me? Mm. Did it help uh, us uh, to control Lashkar Taiba and others? No. Mm. We still had to fight, and we still are. So, uh, why you can say, yes, jolly good show, fighting the global war on terror, but they were there for 20 years and what happened? One night they left, more or less like Vietnam. So, where do we go except that you have to be self-reliant, self-dependent? Ultimately, that is your test. You don't have to be an expansionist. You don't have to be a land grabber. You don't have to run down anybody's religion. You just want to be strong mm -hmm. yourself and look after yourself. I think if you're doing that, that's enough.
not we we need not have to do anything more so when uh, for, for a change the government of india responded to what bbc had to say or what george soros had to say and uh, mm. his ministers came out uh, mrs priti rani spoke out uh, the external affairs minister jay shankar spoke out so but i mean there are people who say that this has been a disproportionate response to what is being said thousands of miles away uh, away how does it affect us so do you find that the response was disproportionate you know in things like this i i am of the view that governments need not respond let we must have a strong enough media think tanks who should respond and you air those opinions based on facts the one thing dealing with the west is you it is not going to be sentiment that will win you mm-hmm. facts you get them facts you challenge them on what they are saying that this is not what it is then they will respect you otherwise they think hey, it serves no purpose because he's got the gui rattled and nervous and that, that can be an impression that you you know oh these chaps are rattled there must be something good we're doing mm-hmm. so bbc has spoken who bbc you know that's the attitude i don't care but you do you you want to know what's being said but you don't have to react or give press conferences or i i that's how i look at it so the external affairs minister called you, called your soros dangerous apart from him being old and opinionated so this uh. basically stuck me what did he mean by dangerous when he called uh, soros dangerous when he when when soros i suppose this is what it means i don't know exactly what he might have meant but to me it means that the solo soros is going around saying he's going to remove governments and prime ministers and i'll make sure that how is he going to remove him by skimming no by conniving by conspiracies so he becomes dangerous i mean the people of india will remove him if they want to i mean you can't challenge my democracy which is bigger than uh, 10 of your countries the, the electorate is bigger than 10 of your countries so and and i want to respect my electorate i don't want to bother about mr soros so he has to be officially ignored but privately harangued and how does one do that sir the private part you guys you guys do it no <laughs> talk about I mean, talk ill talk talk sense give facts dig into his past display stories about him that's how uh, damages reputation if you can so is is this what you refer to in your books as narrative and narrative building yeah narrative is a like a sutradhar you telling but well not so much is a story line that you are giving for general consumption to i just say i'm superior to you my religion is better than yours whatever you want whatever line you want. my armed forces are better than yours. i have the best armed forces in the world okay i accept it but you lost to the afghan mujahideen hmm the taliban you couldn't handle the taliban so what good is your but i i'm i'm digressing you have to build a story line to suit the purpose you want to you wanted to attack iraq you wanted an excuse you wanted a narrative you got the narrative of the world, wmd and, and uh, the nuclear mm-hmm. yeah, and and uh, uh, al qaeda wo kahani ka ghad di hmm so now we to rescue the iraqis from wmd from al qaeda bring democracy there and uh, remove saddam hussein wagera wagera what happened so you build a narrative to your purpose uh, i you know the soviets build their narratives about themselves how 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 the people of soviet union are doing well in life mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and how uh, 
you know, advertisements, dramatics, stories, even even the building that you make gives a narrative. You have the Viceroy's house in New Delhi, about three or four times bigger than the Buckingham Palace. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is a small pillbox compared to this one. And where did the government seat of power sit? Up on the hill. Where was the legislative council? Down there behind some trees. You have to climb up to go to the Bada Sahib's house. But that uh, legislative council was meant for the Indians. They can hang around there, do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, Rajpath, the king's way. The center place is called the great place. These are names you give for people. You name streets after Mughals and uh, Tughlaqs. Huh? There was no street for uh, Rana Pratap. Even Dara, no, no street name. Even Dara Shikul, huh? one of the uh, Dara actual enlightened ones. Yes, they didn't. They didn't do it. So what was the idea, sir? What, because we took over in forty-seven. I mean, till forty-seven, it is all understandable. What, what happened they, after 47? They, 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 what happened after 47? Yes, sir. I mean, we, we kept on with the Tughlaqs and the Babars and the Aurangzebs. Uh, I mean, we could have no. changed after 47. Because we were, we were a secular country. We are a secular country. We have to not... Uh, give up these uh, names. Only the British, the, the, the storyline, those days, the British were bad. These Mughals and these, they were all us. They were us, part of us. So, you know, so they did no wrong. Your history books, you had history books that covered up everything. All we knew was the Tipu Sultan was a brave soldier, a secular man. Mm. Repair a temple. Mm. Actually, he had called the Turks, he had invited the Turks to help him against the English. Like Shah Waliullah called Abdali. Mm -hmm. And who came in 1761, I think, or 59. So, uh, throughout the period, they, they've maintained their. Um, religious uh, beliefs, strengthened them. And it was um, not different from, I think, uh, we, we got into vote bank politics very early. Mm. Right from start. We look at the email, acts we passed, the Hindu Marriage Act, the Muslim Properties Act, and all these safeguarding their interests, not bother about Hindu interests. The whole list of acts that uh, were passed by previous governments that protected. What look at the Work Act of 1995? So why talk about 47? Why not talk 50 years later? True, sir. So it's a pattern that we have evolved so but far. Is it only a pattern we have evolved, sir, or it's somehow in some something which is sort of ingrained in Indians that we are so poor at narrative building? Even when we see this narrative building from China, sir, I mean, for years mm -hmm. we kept on saying that China was not exactly an any uh, what should I say adversary. We kept on mm -hmm. we were in a denial mode, focused on Pakistan. China kept on mm -hmm. building a narrative. So why are we so weak at building narratives? I don't know. I, I don't think we have a sense of history really that strong. Actually, I never had much knowledge of history till I got to college. School didn't teach us history. It doesn't. Well, just as well because there was no history to teach. Otherwise, we be just British history, British Indian history. What the uh, British wrote about us. So much later, one got to know things as they were, as they had to turn out. So, um, we have, it is a very, very important part of your statecraft. If you want to win 
without fighting. Mm -hmm. You have to have a strong narrative. Because given technology, given the way the technology is going, given the way the artificial intelligence is going, these hot wars that we are fighting now may become, uh, may cease to be that important. You fight wars in the mind. Oh. Years from now. As it is, you got this, what is this new chat GPT or whatever it does it to you? And, yes, sir. I mean, the ordinary man and woman will stop thinking. Mm -hmm. We'll stop remembering anything. You won't use your hands. Mm -hmm. Your brain is not going to get used. You're going to get dependent on the machine. And whatever the machine tells you is true then. Anything you want to know, you go type Google and you get the answer from there. They are controlling your minds already. They're giving you information that they want you to know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, unless we develop our own systems, we do our own researches, um, spread our, uh, you know, there's so much of India, there's so much to know. After when they when they built the Ellora, uh, Kailash Mount uh, Temple in Ellora, did they have computers? Did they have uh, earth movers? Mm. And but but and and it was built over years, so they had a constant supply of uh, ar architects and artisans and people who could build it, mm. could chisel the stone, mm. and it wasn't an ordinary stone that you chisel. So. And and the intricacy with which it was done, there must have been some lot of science in it, trigonometry and mathematics and geometry, knowledge of the soil. So uh, and and the kind of stone they found. So these are those are heroic efforts. But ham usi mein khush ho gaye, gyan vyapi mosque aur Temple ikatthe hai, to bada acha hai. Sir. So, it's a very, very me? deep thoughts and very basically a very, very frightening thought, sir. Because mm -hmm. abhi toh bol sir, ki chat GPT, we're talking about chat GPT. But we have been mm -hmm. using this chat GPT, GT, GPT, whatever it is from the past 70 years, sir. We are simply mm -hmm. following what is being told to us. There has been no work to basically unmake the or unravel the truth bring out the truth yeah will be basically yeah. sir i'll come to uh, another important question maybe perhaps the most important question the khan market gang which prime minister modi calls the self appointed liberals yeah. i mean we see yeah. this stretching from ottawa to delhi to new york to munich to washington wherever wherever i mean across the world i call them the khan yeah. market gang of that country now, all of mm. them basically have a one adversary as on date. That is the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi. So, what exactly is happening and why is he such a big threat to all these people around the world? And how serious is this threat to Narendra Modi in return, sir? I'll be very frank with this question. I don't think there is any physical threat. I mean, I'm I don't threat as in the regime change, but, sir. But but in regime change also, I don't think it makes any difference. It is a steam out for some people who have lost entitlement. So, if it hadn't been this Modi, they would... This is more be... towards hatred. Huh? It is more towards hatred, sir. Anger se bhi jada hai, sir. It's hatred. Huh? Because it comes across as hatred. Yeah. So what, it does. It, it, what 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 I mean just, I've been studying so many personalities. But how how do you how do you uh, rationalize hatred? You cannot. I mean what is the what do you don't like? What do you don't like about him? That he is a Hindu? That he wants to say he's a Hindu? That he wants doesn't want you to take gives you no importance? You can't roam around in this corridors of power. A loss, loss of entitlement, right? Mm. 
they i am not saying that one shouldn't have your left views or right views or extreme left views that's, mm-hmm. that's fine we are a democracy we can go ahead and have that and it it is it is it is good it's good to have uh, alternative opinion but uh, just to see that name and get yourself worked up i think is a bit much you know there there are there are lots of things that have been positive in most of europe you can't you don't have a thing like upi mm. you don't have pt upi when you can see your money is being transferred paid and everything is done and there is that other commentary i saw yesterday or day before about a pakistani i think who come who came to india and he was uh, amazed at the way things were he said you guys are miles ahead how did we get there remember how everybody was so a lot of us were very sure that we are going to die in our millions during covid mm. and somebody came from america to frighten us that you know 300 million mm. or something so oh, that's a frightening prospect so they, they and some people lap the story up they like the story what the mistake we are making is that you may have dislike for the government you may have dislike for the prime minister that's that's okay you don't revel in the in in any aspect which means that the nation is suffering a loss agar aap kisi cheez mein pit gaye ya set back ho gaya to the country is hurt but you are very happy hmm You, if you, if you succeed in pulling down uh, the the farmers agitation and making it successful let's that's a point scored mm. but who's lost the farmers have lost yes so will the farmers realize this is the mistake they have made and they shouldn't be doing it they shouldn't have done it i don't know my own opinion is that maybe he is man the prime minister is basically building an indian narrative sir the indian story which mm. a lot of people might be uncomfortable with so they're going to foreign shores calling for interventions yeah. i mean we have reached the stage that no, people go to foreign shores and call for intervention mm. this, like so uh, like shah waliul did these chaps are doing the same thing you mean calling foreigners to help you in <laughs> but it is It is quite uh, yes, amazing that a man goes abroad and says things which you should never have been saying on side your shows, particularly the man of that that position. You and I can go abroad and sit down and have a discussion among friends and criticize the government or whoever, but that's a private commentary. That's not at a dais. it's not a public forum where you are being recorded and quoted that's just not done so with well then you know after some time you stand to lose out on these things if you sabhi kuch kharab hai to fir kuch theek hi nahi hai to fir how does he get elected but the country also loses out sir individuals do but the country yeah. also- this is the danger that is the danger the country also loses out if you are going to do like this no but how does he keep winning elections then if he's so wrong if he's so terribly wrong then the electorate is all wrong so if the if 1.1 one point, 1. 1 billion electorate is wrong or 700 million if they voted is wrong when only six people are right then that's a <laughs> that's something i i will not accept you are insulting my vote so you are a bare democracy you cast your ballot you win it's all yours you run the show so you have to learn these things from the, there were some very good things with the british state for themselves it was used to be the parliamentary elections 
I remember Harold Nichols, Harold Macmillan lost his election. And three days later or four days later, there was a photograph of Macmillan standing at a bus stop with his umbrella waiting for the bus. And another time, I think in recent years, one of the prime ministers lost his election and he was loading the car himself. Mm -hmm. They go to uh, work uh, on their own quite often in, in Scandinavia. Well, that's that's a bit far. We probably don't have to accept all that. But your prime minister is an elected prime minister. The people voted for them. The party elected. It has a five-year tenure. Win the next election, then come back. That's it. Why bad mouth? Why run down your government in front of others? And nobody res nobody respects another person who comes and runs down his own government outside. Believe you me, they think they think it's bad form. No, sir. They think it is bad form. Have you have you heard an American uh, politician coming in and running down his government? No, no one does that. No one does that. But we do. So we can only because we think this will, impress, this will impress him. He'll be very happy to hear this. He will be for the wrong reasons. <laughs> so I hope some some sense is driven into the heads of these strategy makers who design all these policies because India is building a narrative. And I would conclude on the note that democracy in India is pretty safe. And uh, it, is yeah. it is absolutely. It's safe. I agree with you fully. We are a thriving, noisy, raucous democracy. We do it our way, but we do it right in the end. And uh, very soon there will be an Indian narrative. And uh, yeah, I hope so. Hope so. <laughs> on that note, I would like to thank you before concluding this discussion, sir. It's been very helpful. And I, I people learn from it, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.